my name is uh, Vijay Kumar Singh. Um, I am 40 years of age. I was born in uh, Mumbai, India. And currently I am working as a consultant in acute medicine. So a consultant physician here in Skantov General Hospital. I also have a subspecialty interest in stroke and I also do gastroscopy as my additional interest. Um, I'm also interested in medical education, so I'm an honorary um, lecturer in Hull and York Medical School. Right, um, I did my MBBS and finished it in year 2000, and after that, I did few uh, posts in Mumbai itself. And at that time, then I felt um, did my DNB, which is Diploma of uh, National Board as well. But because of the work-life balance, I thought I need to explore my options elsewhere. So I heard about uh, UK and the opportunities in UK. I came to UK in March 2003. That's a, that's a bit of a time now, um, but I still remember it very well. It was scary time for me. I didn't knew anybody in UK at that time. Um, came over here, did my PLAB examination first. Uh, uh, I was there at Cardiff. And then I moved to London. I stayed with a few of our friends. During that time, things were much different uh, when we came in. Jobs were not readily available at that time and you couldn't get into NHS uh, straight away. Um, NHS means uh, the National Health Service, which we have got here. Um, getting a hospital job was not easy or not straightforward, uh, but that was long time ago. Uh, during that time, we used to apply for uh, something called as clinical attachment. And when we used to do our clinical attachment, we used to get exposure as to how the current system works in UK hospitals. I did few posts uh, as a clinical attachment in um, Dudley Hospital, then in Liverpool Hospital, in Dewsbury Hospital. And I have got my first post as a PRHO, which is a pre-registration house officer. Uh, this I'm talking about 2003, 2004, so that's a long time ago. The terminology has changed since then. But the most junior uh, doctors uh, are called as PRHO. It's the similar like which we call as interns back home in India. Did a PRHO job for a six months over here since I had already done my internship in India. And while I did my PRHO job, I gave my MRCP part one examination, which I managed to clear in the second attempt. Um, then got my uh, next post, which is called as senior house officer post. Okay, This is now currently is called as a core medical trainee, uh, though the terminology is going to get changed back again and we are going to call it as internal medical training, so IMTs. Okay, so. I did um, the training as a senior house officer for three years, rotated in various specialty, managed to get a good exposure in cardiology, respiratory, and also in geriatric medicine, along with uh, uh, emergency medicine exposure. In 2007, um, I got into the acute medicine training program, and that's where I started doing my registrar post. Um, over here, uh, instead of university, we call it as a deanery setting, and I got into a Yorkshire deanery, managed to go through the full training program, uh, which was for four years, and it's currently four to five years as well, the same kind of training program. And uh, once I did my training program, I achieved a CCT, which is a, c a certificate of completion of training. Uh, on August 2011. After doing my CCT, I got a consultant job in Skanthav General Hospital. I wanted to do something which was a acute specialty. I wanted to be in a front line because I felt if I could treat somebody who is acutely come in at the front door and that satisfaction of treating somebody was something which I wanted to achieve myself. Hence, I chose acute medicine as my specialist branch. Uh, just to reiterate back, while I was doing my uh, registrar training, I uh, also wanted to do something uh, elsewhere as well, not just acute medicine, but wanted some exposure to stroke medicine. So I trained myself doing some uh, clinical jobs in stroke.
stroke medicine. I learned how to thrombolyze patient. I wanted to, I was very much interested in gastroscopy, so I developed my skill in gastroscopy during the training. Now I am a consultant, I've been a consultant here for last eight years in Skantav General Hospital. I've got a fixed session doing endoscopy. I do on calls for medicine. I look after acutely unwell patient. I look after patient who are in intensive care as well. Look after various emergencies. It doesn't matter uh, what they're coming through. If they're coming with diabetic emergency, cardiology emergency, chest pain, myocardial infarction, uh, diabetes, ketoacidosis, upper GI bleed, you name it. And we manage it in our acute setting. We stabilize them. And once they are stabilized, either we send them home or send them to the specialists. Okay. We also look at patients who are acutely, severely unwell, who needed intubation and ventilation. So we look after them in intensive care unit as well. Again, stabilize them there and if required, then discharge them from there. So my <coughs> working pattern, I've got a nice balance between the acute medicine then I tend to do my specialist area, which is a stroke. So I do on call for stroke from home. Uh, I don't necessarily need to come to hospital for seeing each and every stroke patient. I can do something called as telemedicine, which is like your Skype thing. So like a Skype interview, I can look at the patient, they review them while the registrar is examining them through the Skype or through our telemedicine and give my consultant opinion whether this patient needs to be thrombolyzed or not to be thrombolyzed and do the further consultation with the patient and the family. So it is a very good work-life balance which I have found while working in UK. See I've worked in India as well, I've worked in Mumbai as well, I've worked in corporate hospital. So uh, since I'm from Bombay, I've worked in Bombay hospital uh, which is I believe you would all know who are from Mumbai that they are, it's a big um, corporate tertiary center hospital. And I've worked in small hospital as well uh, for the three years. The main issue working back home in India is having a work-life balance. So in India, in corporate hospital, you may have to work Monday to Saturday, 12 hour shift. Okay, and you may or may not have to work on Sundays as well. And that's not the same in UK hospital. In UK hospital, you work either from 8 o'clock till 4 o'clock or 9 o'clock till 5 o'clock. So that's Monday to Friday. Yes, you do on calls as well. Okay. But when you're doing on calls, you're doing shift system. So you can't work more than 13 hours in a row. We are all bounded by European type directives. So you can't work for more than 48 hours in a week. Yes, on some week you work more when you're doing on calls, but then you work less on other weeks to try and have that kind of a balance. And I thought that was very good for me, particularly if I'm going to have my family, my wife, my kids, I need to give that amount of time. I've got friends who are consultants who are in Mumbai, okay? And they work throughout the week, days and months trying to take even holidays prove a difficult task for them. I do ask them, would they want to visit me in UK? But then throughout the year, they only have a year, uh, sorry, a week or two to take as a holiday. That's a difficult task because they feel if they take holiday, their private patient will move across to somebody else. Okay. Now from the finance point of view, from the money point of view, yes, you can earn wherever you want to. At the end of the day, as a doctor, the demand is there. The demand is there in India as well, in Middle East, in UK, as well as in US. So yes, you will get the finances, particularly in Bombay as well, and in major metropolitan city in India. If you are ready to work throughout, you will earn like anything. In fact, probably you may work, you may earn a bit more than what you're earning in UK due to this tax system which you have got here. But saying that the work-life balance you will not find anywhere else throughout even any other country, not even in US either. Okay, We do have got good work-life balance. You've got holidays on Saturdays and Sunday which you can devote for your family 
throughout the year while you're working, you get at least five to six weeks worth of annual leave, let alone leave for special leaves for carers. If you're sick, you get sick leave as well while working in NHS. And that is what I found was great about working in NHS here. Once you're, yes, when you start off working, you may find it to be a different system. But once you get used to working in NHS, you find that you're working in a set environment, in a protective environment, where you're protected by your seniors. Okay, you've got a set pathway, set guidelines where you're working through. So you're not left alone dangling and thinking, how am I going to treat this patient? You've got somebody there to talk to. Okay, we have got a good set of registrars, SHOs and the consultant as well who are ready to help, who are ready to teach. We have got our time as well assigned for teaching purposes. We teach our juniors to set their goals. Now I'll talk about medicine because I'm a physician here. So I also am an examiner for MRCP PACES. So as an examiner, I teach my juniors how to go through their membership, how to get their theory part one, part two examination, let alone the practical examination as well. And that's where people get their satisfaction from their jobs. I do need to say as well, when I first came to UK, it was not easy uh, for me. First thing, I came from Mumbai, where the weather usually is around 26 to 35 degrees now. And I came in the month of March, and that was shocking. It was cold, okay. So, yes, it, I found it a little bit difficult to start off with, to acclimatize myself to the weather over here. Uh, and I live in Yorkshire, which is uh, also supposed to be a bit more colder than, than the, you know, the southern part of uh, UK. But believe me, after living in Yorkshire and after finding how beautiful it is, how green it is. So now when I go back to Mumbai, particularly in summertime, it's very hard to tolerate the heat and the humidity. Not that I don't like it, okay? I do like meeting my parents, my friends, and my family. But now, living in UK for such a long time, I have a own friends and family here, okay? There has been challenges, okay? It's not hunky-dory, easy thing when you first come to UK. You do find weather as first thing. Second thing, homesickness. Okay, your family, your friends, which you have left back home, you will find, you'll find that you will be missing them. But saying that, there are loads of Indian, Pakistani, Asian population. You will quickly make new friends. Okay, once you make new friends, what you will find that you are actually enjoying the life much more than what you would have back home. On the weekends, you've got those lovely get-togethers which we have, which we organize with our friends and family here. When you get these annual leaves, Europe is not far off. You can visit beautiful countries which we have got nearby, Spain, Cyprus, Portugal, you name it. And it's much more easier within your grasp to visit them, okay? While living in UK, and once you have got your family here, what you will find that there are so many different areas within UK you can visit as well, particularly during weekend. Let alone uh, talking about Scotland, beautiful, picturesque area, Fort William, okay? I go there every alternate year at least for my holiday really uh, you've got areas in london bath south of uh, um, uk cornwall area beautiful beaches wales is very very uh, uh, known for its greenery and beaches as well there's no end to it when you first come to uk there is 
issue around acclimatization but also trying to get that ladder of progressing of promoting getting yourself promoted into from the junior doctors to a, become a senior doctor and consultant can be tricky but it's easily achievable because the guidance is there you'll have your consultant to guide you to help you to hold your hands if need be okay towards the process only thing what we are asking from you is hard work commitment reliability and honesty if these four things if you have got it within you you'll be easily be a successful doctor in uk the things have changed since i've came in the environment now is much more towards recruiting doctors particularly international medical graduates we find international medical gra medical graduate to be hard working and they are there to prove themselves and we are there to support them okay so some challenges will be there but as long as you are hard working and reliable you are a team player you will fit in nicely and you'll get supported nicely as well um looking back through what i have achieved in these so many years was just thinking as to what i would have done differently if i would have first come to uk after finishing my mbbs i i must say um when i finished my mbbs in 2000 i was not certain as to what i need to do in my life i uh, went around working in corporate hospital doing dnbs and doing other exams went to manipal doing other things and stuff i, I won't say i wasted my time but i could have done it more systematically i would have thought and my advice would be if you are going to think about going abroad uk is a very good option okay because we do need doctors now okay the best way to go ahead would be to get your plab done okay once you have done your plab apply choose wisely which area you want to go through uk is, i wouldn't say uk is a w huge country okay but if you have got any friends or family there you may want to get in touch with them what area you would want to go for okay but go for the training post it may be tricky to get a training post straight ahead first thing find a job which won't be difficult has there is a shortage of doctors most likely you will be offered a trust grade job in the specialty which you have applied my advice would be once you have got that trust grade job whilst in the job start preparing for the membership start getting your assessment sorted out okay i interview for the junior doctors as well and majority of the time what i find is that international medical graduates they are very good doctors but they are not good in producing evidence of what they have achieved what i'm trying to say here is whatever you have done you should have an uh, evidence in the form of paperwork that has to be shown in the part of your interviews and things and i was not that good either when i was the sho as well nobody was there to guide me through that process my advice would be if you're thinking about it get your plab done get your membership examination sorted out whilst you are working in a uk based hospital okay get in touch with one of the consultant make uh, him or her your godfather or your godmother okay and ask okay don't if you are not certain don't keep it to yourself raise a question ask how you can be supported ask how you can be guided through the process coming to uk 
can be a big decision you won't want to take it lightly discuss that with your friends and family but by all means you can always post a question on road to uk and the people over here will be able to guide you with that process i'm interviewing for them because i do want to encourage my friends my junior colleagues who are out there who wants to come to uk it is a scary process coming to a new country but once you get adapted to the life what you'll find it is much much more fruitful and a very good life balance which you will achieve here and i'm not saying just for the sake of it i've got my family i've got my children here they go to a very good school here and they enjoy you can enjoy sports you can enjoy basketball you can enjoy cricket well just recently we are organizing as well hospital versus our primary junior uh, gp as well uh, cricket so there is lots of thing to look forward to and to work while in uk and i hope you will find that decision if you have to take that leap that first big leap you will find that a fruitful one thank you very much